Throughout time, man has sought to conquer the oceans. In the mid 20th century, there was a real underwater boom. The dream was to colonize the oceans. Across the world, more than 60 underwater laboratories were built. Like this one, near the island of Heligoland in the North Sea. The 1970s energy crisis fueled the craziest fantasies. They planned for whole cities underwater, fed by undersea hydropower stations. Minerals would be mined from the seabed, processed on site, and then transported to deep sea ports and freight submarines. But when the energy crisis ended, the engineers put their plans and their dreams away. All that was left was Aquarius. After almost a quarter of a century, she still lies off the Florida Keys, 63 feet down. Like an upturned beaker in a bathtub, Aquarius has no airlock. Underneath, it is open to the water. Biologists come here to study the plant and animal world underwater. They stay several days before returning to the surface. Aquarius is small, but it has some creature comforts. It has a microwave and a refrigerator, telephone and internet. There's space for six people. Teams of astronauts from NASA train here regularly. Space and the oceans have a great deal in common. Nowhere else is the physical and psychological isolation so complete. Ideas for underwater habitats are still pursued by many. This vehicle looks like it sprang straight out of the imagination of Jules Verne. It was designed by Jacques Rougerie. For more than 30 years, this marine architect has been designing avant-garde submarines and colonies on the sea floor. His sketches may look utopian, but he's not a dreamer. Many of his designs get built, though it can take dozens of years to complete them. Recently, He's been developing a concept for a floating scientific laboratory that may soon become a reality. The Sea Orbiter is a kind of giant seahorse. One day, it will drift around the world in the currents. 167 feet tall, stabilized by a circular keel, it will travel in the same way as a drifting iceberg. When the sea orbiter is finished, two modules will combine to form a gigantic buoy. Panoramic windows give a perfect view of the world above and below the waterline. A third of the gleaming white aluminum colossus rears above the ocean surface. The rest is hidden below. Jacques Rougerie is convinced that we are about to see a renaissance in the exploration of the seas. New technologies and more powerful computing capabilities make it easier for humans to live under the sea or in space. I strongly believe that man will once again set out to colonize these new worlds of space and the deep. Innovative projects like Sea Orbiter will provide opportunities to study marine phenomena and use new technologies in ways never before imagined. When launched, the futuristic Sea Orbiter will float silently for years across the oceans, subject only to the rhythms of the great ocean currents. <laughs> 